tonight we're here in front of the iconic building Emma Back Porch and the Water Street Cocker. So many people in Burlington have such fond memories of this restaurant um, that stretches back to the early 1900s. And from a historical perspective, I'd like to walk us through the history of Emma's Back Porch, previously the Estaminet, Estaminet um, Standard Hotel, um, and just talk about the history itself, but then talk about the stories that are connected to the building. In 1798, there was nothing here. The Brits wanted to give land to Joseph Brandt, um, who had assisted them with their struggles against the Americans. So in 1798, Joseph Brandt was given close to 4,000 acres. And this parcel of land that includes Emma's back porch was part of that. He died in 1803 and the land was uh, ceded um, to his son, John. So out of the estate, a gentleman by the name of James Gage bought land, which included this parcel of land. And he in turn ceded that land to his son, Andrew. And Andrew in 1843 built this house. In 1870, sells the house to a gentleman by the name of William Kearns. Who was William Kearns? William Kearns was a very influential person in Burlington. William Kearns passed away in 1913 and a gentleman by the name of Harold Lazier purchased this building. He was actually um, a neighbor. He owned an adjoining property, probably something on the, the parking lot next door. He was a, a lawyer from Hamilton, I believe, and he, uh, he purchased the property out of the estate. Um, in 1919, a couple from Hamilton, Emma and George Byron, leased, rented the property from him and opened a restaurant called the Estaminet, uh, which proved to be a very successful restaurant. Um, and uh, George and Emma successfully ran it until about, George passed away in 1938. Um, Emma retired in 1952 and passed away in 1959. Then um, a, a local couple, the Coopers, Reginald Cooper um, purchased it and it became, it, it, it had several other names at that point. I think Tall, Tall Trees, Sharkers, um, again, really, really successful. And eventually their son, Brian, um, inherited it or took it over. He sold it and it went into the hands of a developer, I believe, and um, a gentleman, uh, Craig, um, uh, gosh, can't remember his last name for the moment, um, he ran it very successfully as Emma's back porch. And so many, many people have the fondest memories, whether it's a wedding, it's a birthday, you name it, it all happened at Emma's back porch. But we need to go back 
to 1919 to understand some of the stories that surround this iconic building. talk about some of the stories associated with this iconic building and let's start with the ghost stories. There are many many different versions of them. One is um, that George murdered Emma and um, Emma therefore never left the building and her ghost with her wispy uh, white uh, long evening gown um, floats through the air. Um, uh, uh, it just, I do have to say that this story just doesn't ring true, mainly because George died in 1938 and uh, Emma didn't die until 1959. So that story is not true. Another story is that Emma slipped and fell on the stairs. If you go through the front door of the Water Street Cooker, um, there's a set of stairs and apparently uh, Emma slipped and fell on those steps and died. Hence Emma's ghost. Um, again, the wispy long dress. Uh, uh, but again, Emma retired from um, the it's the uh, Estan Estaname in 1952 and did not die until 1959. So that story is really, really doesn't hold water. Then there are stories about children, ghosts of children in the basement. The big story is that Emma and George had five children and two of whom, Peter and Sarah, died early and it is their ghosts that are running and playing in the basement. Well, my research tells me that Emma and George only actually had one child. They really didn't have five children. I've searched uh, birth certificates, death certificates, census, and the only child that I could come up with is uh, their son, uh, Foster Laverty uh, Virant. And uh, Foster Laverty was born in 1903 and died in, I think it was 1941, in a car accident um, on the QEW. But what is really interesting, if you go to um, the cemetery and you find the gravestone for the Byrons, you will find that there is um, George and Emma and Foster uh, Byrons but there is also a loving daughter, Nanita Byrons. Nanita Byrons was born, um, well, let's go back. Um, Foster Byrons was 20 and he married a lady by the name of Ada Hayhurst, who was 18. Foster was a chef and Ada was a maid. Um, you can see that from their marriage certificate. Um, so they were married May the 1st, 1924. Nanita Byrons was born October the 17th, 1924. At that point in time, Emma would have been 49 and um, George would have been 50. So the likelihood of Nonita being their child is very unlikely. And the, the extreme likelihood of Nonita being um, 
foster and Ada's child. Uh, I mean, it's it's it, it's their child. Uh, Nonita um, was later married. She had a child, and on that child's family tree, she lists her grandparents as uh, Foster, uh, uh, Byron's, and Ada Hayhurst. Um, so the um, story of the five uh, children, two dying, I'm afraid that's kind of out of the picture as well. So, if you remember, I said earlier that they opened the restaurant in 1919 and Prohibition was in full force. The Ontario Temperance Act came into being in um, 1916 and it was totally illegal to sell liquor in Ontario, in Canada actually, in Ontario, to Ontarians but you could make liquor in Canada and you could sell it to the US. So what developed was a huge industry, the, um, the distilleries, the beer companies, they made out like bandits. They produced um, whiskey and rum and beer, and there was a huge industry that um, evolved, um, which was rum running. So there is a story about Emma's back porch that I think there may be um, some truth in. I don't think there's much truth to the ghosts, but that's my humble opinion. Um, but there is a rumor that there was a tunnel coming into Emma's back porch, into the building, and it actually was supposed to go across the road to a building on the other side of the road, at the other side of Water Street. Now, I'm not sure that the tunnel ever existed, but I do believe that there is truth that maybe um, the Estaminet Hotel um, did participate in some form of rum running. So in Hamilton, there were two very famous um, rum, ru rum runners. One was an Italian mob guy called Rocco Perry, and he was the mob king, of uh, an early mob king of, Burley, of Hamilton. Ben Kerr was a, um, a tradesman. He was a, um, he was a plumber, he was a union man. He was very well known in Hamilton. Um, he was a piano player in the evening and in the evening he was known as Bensley Kerr. And what is interesting to me, which makes the um, Estaminet story vaguely possible, is that Ben Kerr married George Byron's sister, Louisa May. So Ben Kerr got interested in speedboats he, at the foot of Bay Street, he um, bought some land, he built motor um, boat uh, launches, and he built speedboats, and he got himself into debt. And um, he heard about Rocco Perry, who was also a Hamilton guy, and he thought that he would get in on the rum running act. So he would um, take his speedboat in the night and in the darkness, he would come across the lake. He would go to Seagram and um, Goodrum and Warts and he would buy liquor, legal to buy the liquor. He would buy beer and then he would run it. Funnily enough, probably back across here he made on his way to Hamilton and I just think it's fairly feasible that he might have dropped off 
alcohol at his brother-in-law's restaurant here in Burlington. Um, the standard hotels, I mentioned earlier, were not allowed to sell full-strength alcohol or beer, but and there were inspectors who would come around and um, monitor what they were doing. So when they knew an inspector was coming, the standard hotels would take the feed from the light beer, uh, they would take the feed from the full strength beer and connect it to the light beer. So when the inspector tested it, all was copacetic and nobody knew that they, were, that they had been selling illegal liquor. Now, why do I think that they had been selling um, illegal liquor? They only had four tables to start with. How can you make money in a restaurant with only four tables and you're not able to sell liquor? Um, in, so they rented that place in 1919, but by 1930, Emma Byron's had enough money to be able to purchase the building. And prohibition didn't end until about 1930, somewhere there. So I, I just, it's the one story that I think there is some truth to. Now, Bill Kerr, there's a, an interesting ending, Ben Kerr, why I keep saying Bill Kerr, I do not know. Ben Kerr, um, interesting ending to his life. In 1920, by 1929, I think it was, um, the, fed, the feds um, were all over the rum runners. They were getting violent, they had boats out with guns, they were shooting the rum runners, and a lot of the rum running had gone away. The, the rum runners said, hey, enough of this, I don't want to die over this. But Ben Kerr um, kept going. He kept going out in the night. He would go in the winter across the lake when um, it was iced over. And at 1929, he and another guy went out. They were delivering liquor and never came back. They had a boat called Pollywog and they, they disappeared five weeks later their parts of the one guy parts of his body uh, were washed up and then they found the entire body of Ben Carr um, who uh, had been washed up. The rumors were that Rocco Perry um, had them killed because they were encroaching on his territory um, but the other thought is that he just pushed it too far and went, uh, ran out of gas and um, they either froze to death or I'm um, not sure what happened. Um, but he did end up um, with a, a quite a nasty death. So did Rocco Perry. He, um, in 1944, he went out after his uh, wife um, had been shot a couple of years later. He went out for a walk because he was trying to ward off a headache and um, never came back, never heard of again. And it is rumored that he has cement shoes and he's in Hamilton Harbor. Um, so, I, it's the one story about uh, the Estaminet Hotel that I think there could be some truth to, and that is the rum running story. many lovely stories about this wonderful old building and the many facets that it's gone through that now it's shuttered and it's been shuttered since um, 
Oh, COVID began last year, 2020. Um, and still here we are in July of 2021 that um, there's no sign of it reopening yet. Uh, there are many, many rumors in Burlington about um, different chains looking at coming to Burlington, but nothing confirmed that I know of. And I, like many, many other Burlingtonians, um, are hoping and wishing that this beautiful building with such rich history will reopen again and that we'll be able to enjoy a beverage on the patio or a celebration um, that has uh, many, many of us have celebrated over time. If you enjoyed this video, you can um, subscribe below um, by clicking the button uh, to a thousand words. And my name is Nicola Thompson and I look forward to um, sharing some more videos, historical videos with you. So just like, share and click the button.